Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some fabulous six by six projects. And I've been doing a lot of talking about the end of celebration and all the rewards that you get as a customer if you spend for every 50 or $100 you spend, you get to choose a free product and uh, that's awesome. But there is one more deal that's even more awesome that I haven't talked about yet during this series and that is the starter kit. And I got the starter kit 15 years ago and since then I've been enjoying having a 20% discount on my products and not only that, that I have joined this great community of stampers and um, having all the insider knowledge of stamping up. And I really, really love that feeling of belonging to something. So today I'm gonna to talk about the starter kit as I make these six by six projects. So um, the starter kit special is a little different than um, what you would get if you, you're, instead of a customer as you spend 50 or $100. Um, now um, you're going to get for um, $99, you're going to get to choose $125 worth of product, any product in the, the catalogs, in the mini catalog, in the annual catalog, plus you're going to get all of this paper, five packs of paper from um, the upcoming annual catalog. And um, this paper, I love the patterns on this paper. You'll see them in a moment as I make the projects. Um, but they, like it's for each color group, except for the new in colors that will be coming in that we don't know about yet. But for the color group, the in color group, the 2020, 2022 color group, and then all the other color groups, like the brights and the, um, the, well, what do we have here? Sorry, my brain's not functioning. The regals, the subtles, the brights, and the neutrals. So you have all of those. So you're getting $125 worth of product plus $57.50. This, this is what this would cost if you were buying it out of the catalog. Plus Stampin' Up! throws in a paper pumpkin kit. So like that's almost like $200 worth of product for $99. The starter kit also ships for free. So I just wanted to share with you some fabulous projects that you could make with uh, six by six paper. And um, I also, um, on my blog, if you search for six by six, I also had, I did a series um, of six by six projects. I don't know if it was last year, maybe two years ago. And those would also work really well with this paper. So I just wanted to point out that there's a lot of six by six projects. So you're gonna get all this paper and you're gonna have so much fun playing with it. So um, I'm just gonna put this up here just in case you're interested. That is the link to my um, starter kit page. And um, so if you wanna check it out and find out more information, please go there. Please ask me questions because I'm always happy to answer them. If you have any questions about the starter kit, please ask. Um, the other thing, remember I, from my ordering special, I have, I'm going to be sending out this tutorial to everyone that orders um, this weekend to make these cute little card holders in portrait and landscape mode. And um, as if you get the starter kit through me, you get all of my tutorials for free. So once this um, tutorial is available um, to my customers to send out, I'm gonna also send this out to my team. So um, don't worry, you won't miss out on this tutorial. In fact, you're gonna get almost 80 tutorials uh, of my uh, highly prized tutorials for free plus uh, you'll get this one as well once it's available so you won't miss out um, on that aspect of it. Okay, I'm so glad that some of you are here this morning. Um, I am going to jump in now and share with you these projects. Um, one of them, this one's um, right here, this little one. Um, I actually designed this a little while back. I just haven't had a chance to get it out as a project. 
Um, but this is, um, I designed a Ghirardelli minis, no, a regular Ghirardelli chocolate square purse many years ago. It was very popular. Um, now they have Ghirardelli minis. And so I designed um, one that houses two little Ghirardelli minis. So this is like a smaller version of the purse. And I'm going to show you how to make that out of six by six paper. So this is a very cute thing. Then this gift bag right here is made out of two sheets of six by six paper. So it's, it's, it's a cute little thing. And I'm going to show you how to make this little cute little gift card. So all of these things are, are gonna house inside the gift bag. So let me show you. I'm gonna change over here so I can share with you a little better. So I've got my little gift bag here. And so this will fit inside the gift bag. Okay, now you see where I'm getting. And then you can slide this in here, okay? And now you have a little gift that you can give for someone's birthday. And it's super cute. Look at the lovely patterns on this paper. I just love the pattern. Let me grab the pack so I can pull some out for you. So this is the um, one of the packs you're getting, um, the 2020-2022 in colors. And so there are um, four patterns, but they're double-sided. So let me show you. So for each color that Stampin' Up! currently has, you're going to get that and those patterns. So I really like these tone-on-tone -tone patterns. They're just so nice. They're so easy to use on cards as well. Um, one of the hardest things sometimes to work with on a card is a really busy pattern. So these patterns are nice and neutral. So for every color, we're going to have um, two sheets, two sheets of this and two sheets of this. For the in color pack, you're going to get four sheets of each because there's less colors. Um, each of these has um, 10 colors in them. So that's why there is less, um, less sheets, um, not less sheets, but less sheets per color. Okay. So let me put this aside for a moment and pull these back out. Maybe oh, I'll just tuck them in there. That way they'll stay out of my way. So we're going to start off by making the little gift bag first. And I think I'm going to use um, this pattern on the front here. And I'm going to bring in my scoring tool. And of course, yet again, I've lost my stylus tool. I think I have like three of these. <laughs> and every time I look for them, they are gone. I wonder if that happens to you too. They're just gone. The tools that you need, they just they just disappear. All right, there's a little handy trick that I have for when I'm scoring these is because this paper is thinner than our cardstock, I'm gonna cheat and score both of them at the same time. Yes, I am. So remember, I'm starting with six by six paper and I'm gonna score at the one and a half inch mark on three sides. So just watch because, um, so one and, whoop, one and a half, turn it, I keep slipping, one and a half. You know what, when you're scoring, it's better to like stand up. Um, and I'm sitting down right now and that's why it's hard to score because you need to kind of be over top. So one and a half on three sides. And then on the fourth side, you're going to score at the half inch mark. All right. Okay. One other thing I should have mentioned, and I'm glad I just checked. Um, when you put the patterns in there, make sure they're facing the same direction. Otherwise, um, the back of the pattern might look a little off um, because we're going to fold over a little cuff afterwards. So we've got two sheets and I'm going to grab my paper snips, which is also 
just disappeared on me. We're going to cut both of these a little differently. So let's first of all, let's identify the half inch size. So there's the half inch and there's the half inch. I don't know if this side's easier to see or not. Okay, I'm going to work on the back side right here. I want this pattern for the front. So for this one, I'm going to cut away the bottom two squares, the half inch score lines up here. Okay, so let's do this. This is along the score line. So I'm just cutting to the score intersection. I'm gonna see how this works in just a second. And then we're gonna cut away these two corner rectangles. So basically, I'm cutting away the corners. I just need to make sure I find the score lines. Sometimes with um, busy paper, it's hard to find. So if you have trouble seeing where your score lines are, walk to a window to do your cutting because it will help you um, get better light. This morning in here, it's pretty bright. Okay. So that's what the first one looks like. All the corners are gone, okay? Now, for this one, half inch is up at the top here, and we're gonna cut in from the side here. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. The side here. And the side here. I'm going to bend these a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then on the top, that half inch one, we're going to snip down from the top. Okay, so you can see how I did that. Cut lines here and then cut lines here. Okay, so now if I can find a bone folder, also gone this morning. As my week has progressed, my room has gotten messier and messier, and all my bone folders have walked. I have four bone folders. <laughs> four of them. All right, let's fold this along the score line. So this is going to be my outside pattern here. And I bet you the next thing I'm going to be looking for is my Tombow, which is also locked. Okay, I'm going to use my new glue bottle, I swear, this morning. Okay, so this little pattern right here, um, I'm going to fold down. This is going to be an inside cuff uh, for my paper bag. Okay, so it's going to have a little cuff that's on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my glue bottle and then I'm going to try not to have too much glue come out because it's a new bottle and I'm going to glue this little cuff down on the inside. Okay. All right. So now we're going to come to this next one also going to fold. Someone told me the other day on my tutorial that I probably should have folded first and yes I probably should have folded first this time too. I just get kind of anxious I want to do all the cuts and then I forget you could you could fold first. Absolutely fold first because <laughs> sometimes it's easier because then you have all these cut pieces and then you have to like uh, fold them over individually so yeah. Um, she was right. Um, I probably am not doing that in the correct order. Okay. All right. So now, okay, this little one is going to be a cuff too. So let's glue down this cuff. We're going to leave these little cuffs for afterwards because we're going to glue them onto the other piece. So let's just do the big cuff here. And just 
glue this down. All right, so we're going to glue, this is gonna be the bottom, this piece down here. So let's put Tombow on here. And we're going to bring these two pieces together at the bottom. Okay. And then we'll fold in these bottom tabs. I'm going to put Tombow on them. And then we'll bring in the first side. And just take a little care to line this up, um, you know, to make sure it looks good. The glue kind of can slide around a little bit for just a bit. So there's the first side, then the second side. Okay, and then we're gonna bring in these sides. So just um, for now, I'm not gonna put Tombow on these top little tabs yet. We're just gonna do the sides. So come up to just where the tab is. I'll do the other side too while I'm at it. If you do end up putting Tombow on those top, that's okay because we're gonna glue them down in a second anyway. So it doesn't matter. So just bring them in for alignment. You just have to would have to be careful at the top here not to get glue on your fingers. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, I love this box. Okay, and then bringing this in. Okay. And then the cool thing is these top little tabs are going to kind of um, reinforce it because it's going to come over top of both of those sides. So now when we fold this in, it's going to make a really nice um, bond so it's like all really secure. Okay, and there is the cute little gift bag. So now I do want to add some ribbon to this. So let me take a pencil and I need a ruler. Um, so I've got a centering ruler um, and it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use a regular ruler do that because I don't want to confuse anyone. So I'm just going to go in three quarters of an inch in and I'm going to make myself a little um, pencil mark three quarters of an inch in and that will be my ribbon hole and that's about um, I wanted about eight an eighth of an inch from the top because the cuff is half an inch so it's nice if I can uh, punch through two layers and not go down too deep where I'm not gonna get the two layers so we'll do that for both sides three quarters of an inch in from the side and about half an inch down. Sorry, three quarters, no, one eighth of an inch down, not half of an inch down. Okay, now we're gonna take a dragonfly. I'm gonna take, um, this is a one eighth inch handheld punch and I'm just gonna punch these little holes with that. And Stampin' Up! currently does not sell this, but a 1 8 inch handheld punch should be fairly easy to come by if you don't already have this in your collection. You could also use like a crocodile. So those are the little holes. And then we're gonna take um, a seven inch length of ribbon. This is the metallic edge ribbon. And as I am grabbing all these products and stuff, these would be the products that you could choose for your starter kit. So the paper is going to come for like for free automatically, but some of these other supplies you might need to create your um, project. So that's um, 
that's what you could put on your starter kit if you wanted to. Okay, so I've got, this is uh, the silver edge metallic ribbon. So the easiest way to do this is start with a knot on one end and you just want to bring that knot as close as possible to the end like that. So just do a loop, bring it through the loop and scoot it all the way down to the end. Okay, so both of those are prepped. Now I'm gonna come in from the inside and what I do, I don't know if you can see that, I just kind of squish my ribbon together and then I pull it through and I kind of keep it squished and I just grab it and pull it through. Okay, so once it's pulled through, I pull it through all the way so that I can make my second knot. And again, I'm gonna roll it or push it to the end. Okay, and then I'll pull this out. And then you can twist this so that the handle doesn't look twisted. And there's the first little handle like that. So we'll do that for the other side. Squish, pull through, squish, pull through. Make another knot. And then bring that knot all the way to the end. And then pull this out. Okay, so isn't that cute? Such a cute little tote bag. Let me tell you how big this tote bag is, just so you know, because it's not huge. It is three inches by one and a half by four inches tall. So it's a tiny gift bag, but don't you sometimes find tiny things are really, really cute? Okay, so let's add a little something to the front of this. So I'm gonna bring in this is Misty Moonlight cardstock, and I suggest if you're starting out, um, or if you just need a few sheets of these, get a multi-pack of the in-color cardstock. That way you get a few sheets of every color. You'll get, um, I believe it's four sheets of Misty Moonlight, four sheets of Magenta Madness. So you're gonna get a smattering of all the different colors. So it's great, because you get a nice little starter we're going to use the story label punch and I'm going to punch out two pieces out of there we're going to create a little label and then I'm going to take this whisper white piece and I'm going to use my misty moonlight ink pad look at okay I just love it that everything matches look at ink pad cardstock in color paper it's like no brainer every single time it's just easy i think that's one of the reasons i fell in love with stampin up because everything matched i didn't have to go to the store and try and match everything i want to use the you are amazing greeting and i'm using the you are amazing stamp set it's a great little greeting stamp set we got a happy birthday, we got a thanks, we've got a congrats. It's just a nice greeting set, nice fonts. So for this one, I'm gonna do You Are Amazing. Ink that up and stamp it down. Look at that font. Could never write like that, but it looks so pretty. Okay, and then I'll use this. I'll center it and punch it out and then let me close this up so I don't stick my fingers in it and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to put some Tombow on here and I'm going to layer this underneath here. I'm going to let about hmm, maybe just a little bit more than an eighth of an inch peek out down here at the bottom. That will help the label pop a little bit. And then I'm going to put Tombow just on the top half because that's not going to reach all the way down. And then let me maneuver this. And I'm going to put this one the same distance. And then press down. 
Okay, and then I'll grab some dimensionals and pop them on the back because I want this to have a little bit of dimension. Okay, and then this is going to be on here, so let me center this. Okay, and then I want to add a little flower to this too, just to make it cuter. And I'm going to take, all right, I've got a scrap piece right here. I'm going to take my little flower punch. This is the small bloom punch. Give this a little punch. I'm going to take my stylus tool for my scoring board. And this is my stamp and pierce mat. I'll take my large ball of the stylus and I'm going to press down on every petal. Okay, because I want to kind of distress the flower and make it look not so flat. So I'm going to do that for every petal, do a little a swirl in it, then turn it around to the back and then I'm going to do the same for the center of the flower. And now you can see the flower has a little bit of dimension. And then I'm going to take a pearl jewel and oh, where are all my tools? I'm going to take the pearl off and put it in the center like that. Oh, and I'm going to use a mini dimensional, not Tombow, and stick it on the back. Remove the backing and then I'm going to add that kind of right to the corner right there. And that's how I make that little bag. It's all done and ready for you to put something in it. And you know, a purse is really cute. A lot of people like purses. Maybe it's not a manly gift, um, so maybe not the best masculine gift, but it is perfect, a perfect girly gift. So let's, well, we're going to, we're going to do the card first. So let's do the card first and then we'll do the little purse to go inside of it. Okay. We're going to make a little three by three card and I need my trimmer. It's all the way across the room. Wouldn't you know it? Okay. So that one took two sheets of the paper, six by six paper. This card is going to take half a sheet of the six by six paper. So all you do is put this in the trimmer, line this up at the three inch mark, push it down and give it a cut. You can actually score on your trimmer as well. I love my scoring board. Um, yeah, a little bit too much, so I always bring it out. But I'm going to show you how I would score this. If you were just using a trimmer, you could use your little trimmer. We have a little blade down here that's just for scoring. So I need to score this at the three inch mark. So I'm lining it up at the three inch mark, and I'm just going to score that. I don't know if you can see the little line right there, maybe a little bit. So you can either use your scoring tool or you can use your trimmer and then we're going to fold this in half. Use your bone folder to crease that fold. Okay, so now we've got a cute little card and then let me grab some of the pieces that I need. Okay, this little piece is a two and a quarter inch square. And this is going to be a birthday card. I like blue and yellow together. So I'm going to use Happy Birthday in Misty Moonlight. I could also stamp this. This color is called Bumblebee. We could also stamp it in Bumblebee, but yellow tends to be a very light color. And I don't like to use it for words because the words don't pop very well with yellow. So I'm going to use Misty Moonlight. I'm going to try my best to center this. I'm not standing up. 
which makes it hard to see. Okay, I'm a little closer to the bottom than I, I probably would like. Okay, I'm gonna stamp this again. Let me, let me stand up this time and do this. Let's see if I can get it closer to, always like, you can always stamp on the back, right? Okay, let's see if I can get this a little closer. Okay, that one, that one now looks a little crooked. Is it a little crooked? Okay, it's closer to the top. So I'm gonna keep this one. <laughs> I am being picky today. So I'm going to take it and mount it on a piece of Misty Moonlight. And this one is a two and a half inch square. Okay. So I'm just gonna add, I'm trying to use very little Tombow on here. Okay, mount this up. And then this will be on the front. These projects are all really clean and simple. I don't know if you like that style or not, clean and simple everything. Um, it's actually my favorite style. I'm just double checking to make sure I'm making the card um, correctly. Clean and simple is my my style. I don't like it when things get too cluttered. My happy place is clean and simple. So just the blues and the yellows are really nice. Um, now I want to do one thing. We're going to add some flowers, um, a blue flower and a white flower. Let me see scrap paper. So bring in the small blooms punch again. You know, like it's nice to bring in the same products over and over again if you're doing a gift set so that they they look good together. So I'm gonna do a white and a blue flower. And then I'm gonna bring in my mat again. Same thing. The large ball of my stylus tool, and I'm gonna make a little circle in each of the center of the petals and then flip it over and do it right in the center of the flower. So petals, 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 turn in the middle. And now we've got two little flowers to add. I want to color one of them blue because if I put a white one in the center of this white one it's gonna um, not pop very very well so let's color it and give it a chance to dry so guess what we have misty moonlight stamp and blends these are our alcohol markers so you can use them to color the pearls and um, I'm gonna use the dark one and I'll grab one of these pearls and I'm just gonna wiggle on it gently. I don't want to break down my tip. Okay, so this is just going to take a second or two or a minute. I'm just going to leave it alone for a minute to dry. Okay, because if I picked it up right now, um, I would have blue hands. Look, I even have green ink. I, I haven't even used green ink today and I have green ink on my hands. I don't know where I picked this up. It's just one of those mornings, right? So let me glue these flowers down. put one down here and one up top here I debated last night I had blue pink and yellow flowers out here and the white and then I settled on blue and white um, that just looked the best in my mind so I'm gonna grab one of these big pearls and add it to the white flower Press down. Um, I'm going to let that continue to dry for a moment. I'm, I'm scared to touch it already. Um, after I got a blue finger last night, that's why when I was designing this. So I'm going to add a little bit of Tombow to this piece. This is going to be for the inside, so you can write on it. This is a two and three quarter inch square. So this one will go in here. So there'll just be a little yellow rim around here. Okay. 
Okay. And now I can grab my little blue flower, blue center, and transfer it. And look, no blue on my fingers, but I have green from somewhere. So there's the little card. Isn't it cute? I love the font on the happy birthday, right? And then bring it back to the card. And isn't that pretty? We could have done a white card base as well, but just having that little pop of yellow as the card base, I think these two coordinate really well together. All right, now for the piece de resistance. The purse, the Ghirardelli Minis purse. So if you don't have Ghirardelli min Minis and you want to use um, regular Ghirardelli um, chocolates, I also have a tutorial for the regular size. I don't know what type of paper I use for that, to be honest, because it was a long, long time ago. Um, but the Ghirardelli Minis are cute. I don't know, I you know what? I actually have to probably steal some from my drawer. I, I'm that disorganized this week. So these are the, the minis. They are just a small, look at the size of my thumb compared to the mini. They are just a cute little size chocolate and they come in other flavors as well. You can get them in a multi-pack so they have all the different flavors in it. So that might be a good one to do if you're gonna do a bunch of different birthday gifts, you can match them to people. Like for instance, my mom, loves dark chocolate so this would be good for her um but i don't love dark chocolate <laughs> that's why i still have ghirardelli minis left over in dark chocolate because i don't love dark chocolate but every other flavor is gone because i like the other flavors so uh, but anyway that allows me to uh, create this little purse they just slide right in there so let us start and create this project so first of all, we do actually have to cut this down a little bit. So it's a little cheater. We don't use a full size six by six, um, but I'm gonna want the pattern. I want the stripey pattern to be up and down. So I'm actually gonna um, move this to the five inch mark and cut at the five inch mark. Okay, so you're gonna have an extra piece left over. And that's a yay thing. You can use that for another project. Then I'm gonna turn this, and now I wanna put this at the five and one eighths inch mark. So you're gonna to have to kind of be cognizant. One side is five and one eighths, and one side is five inches. Okay, so this is the five and one eighths inch side. So I'm gonna cut. All right, the easiest thing to do then would be actually um, to cut this piece right away in half. You could do the scoring on the full piece, but I think I'm gonna stack them. That will be easier. So on the five inch side, you're gonna cut it in half yet again to two and a half inches. So got that two and a half inch mark. So you're gonna now have two equal pieces of two and a half inches by five and one eighths inches, okay? I could, I'm gonna bring in my scoring board because I, I just love my scoring board. I'm sorry, I could have done it on my trimmer, but no, the scoring board must come out. And you know what? These I could probably score stacked as well. I'm gonna try it, see how it goes. So I'm gonna stack both the pieces on top of each other. Just make sure they are really stacked and in that corner. And I'm going to score this at the two and a half inch mark and the two and five eighths inch mark. So, two and a half and two and five eighths inch mark. Okay, so I have um, that little one eighths inch separated in the center. Okay, two and a half and two and five eighths. Generally, we don't do such like um, a short little score line. But we're gonna fold this now along the score lines. They're very close together. So you're going to have to kind of take a little care. Okay, that's what, the, what it looks like. Okay, so I've got both of these pieces folded. 
And now I'm gonna take some tear and tape. I don't generally use tear and tape, but for this, I do need the tear and tape because I wanna add ribbon to this. And in order to attach ribbon, um, Tombow isn't very good at holding ribbon for some reason. It's just, it just doesn't work very well. So I'm gonna use tear and tape on one of the ends. It doesn't matter which one. Choose one of them and you're gonna do um, tear and tape just across one of the ends like this. We're going to take a little piece of ribbon and it should be five inches. This is the same metallic ribbon that I used and just to double check, you can double check to make sure it looks right because that's what you're going to do. And press this down and then we're going to lift that liner off. All right, then we're gonna take one end and stick it on the ribbon. We're gonna bring this around and stick the other end over here onto that tear and tape, okay? Then you're gonna take your second piece and you're gonna line up the edges up top here and then press down. So it's gonna create kind of this piece that looks like this. Okay, so now what I wanna do, I, I want this to kind of billow out a little bit, like have a little bit of a curve, and that will happen naturally when you put the Ghirardelli minis in there too, but you can help it a little bit. Close to the score line, use your bone folder and just kind of give it just a little bit of a curl not at the top, but just at the bottom, and do that on both sides. Just give it a little bit of uh, a curl, so like it just billows out just a little bit, okay? And then we're gonna use tear and tape again. And I'm just going to make sure it's down all the way. And then line it up with the top. Okay. And do the same thing for the other side. You want this open V in the center because that's what's going to help it stand up. Come to the other side. Put some tear and tape up here. Press down, pull, here, okay, I need to grab some minis, I think I have some in the drawer over here. Okay, yeah, I do. The chocolate that I don't eat. The dark chocolate. Do you like dark chocolate or milk chocolate? So this is going to come in here and slide in here. And this is going to come in here and slide in here. And you're going to kind of see now it's kind of got its shape. And because this is split in the bottom, that's what gives it its, um, its look. All right, now we need to decorate up this piece for the top. So I'm gonna need a piece of Magenta Madness and I'm gonna use the same punch, story label. And I'm going to need a Bloom Punch as well. All right. And we're gonna do the same thing to that poor little flower. We're gonna torture it with the stylus tool. We're not torturing it. I should say we're making it look prettier. Okay, <laughs> bad choice in words. We're gonna make it look prettier so that it's got dimension. And then this piece, you can either fold it or you can score it in half. I'll show you what I'll do if I score it in half. 
I just, I line it up on my six inch score line and I kind of look at it and see that it's like centered kind of on that six inch score line. When it looks centered, then I'm just going to score it. I find that easier than trying to like fold it in half because when you fold cardstock in half, it kind of crazes a little bit. So now I can bring it in and fold it. And when I had it yesterday, I thought it looked a little plain. So I grabbed my memento, well, my magenta badness ink bad. And I grabbed a sponge dauber and I just sponged the edges just to deepen the color a bit. This actually dries lighter than it looks right now. Um, you can still see it, but it doesn't look as, as dark. Okay, so I just sponged that. You can sponge your flowers too, but I did not do that. And then we'll bring in Tombow. And we're going to add this piece to the top because the Ghirardelli minis, they slide in from the side. The top does not need to open and it's sealed shut anyway. So, and then you're just going to add that right to the top, right over the edge and pinch it down for a second. Okay. Pinch, 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 pinch. And then we're going to add the little flower, the little tombow as well. And just center it on there. And it kind of looks like a little flap on the purse. And now I've lost my pearls. They are over here. Okay, so many things. When you make three projects in a row, it gets kind of crazy. And then I'm going to add this on here. I'll move some of these things out of the way because it looks messy and cluttered, doesn't it? Okay, so here are the two little purses in pink. And you can make these in any of the colors because the pearls and the ribbon white goes with every color so guess what you can get a roll of that ribbon and go to town and make so many of these and the pearls as well you've got those little punch shapes if you get the starter kit you're gonna have 200 sheets of paper to play with you could make up all these little birthday gifts for the next year out of that um that paper so cute right and look at the patterns aren't they nice patterns they're just so nice. Okay, so let me bring in the different ones. So this is the one I just made. I made this with this and this, okay? And then I made this one. Let me do it reverse, reverse, reverse. So you can see all the different patterns there. Um, with the paper. They just look so pretty, right? Um, I like these new patterns better than our outgoing patterns. Um, so right now, these are our patterns. I've got this paper all kind of cut up. So I did put a link to this paper in my supply list. This is my the outgoing paper. Um, and it's these are the patterns just so you can see, these are the outgoing patterns. They have a lot more white in them, okay? So I like these patterns, but these new patterns are pretty patterns, very pretty and elegant patterns, and they have less white in them. And I think that just makes everything look so nice, right? You know, the just the, the look of all the little little pieces. So that is what you can do with all that paper in the starter kit. What do you think? I am coming back over, sliding back in. All right, 
I'm going to read your comments and um, uh, if you have any questions about the starter kit, just let me know. Um, some of my team members are on here this morning and I love my team. We um, have kind of two things that we do every month together. We have um, a team meeting and we also have a team stamping night, which is coming up uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is our team stamping night. And so we do that via Zoom right now. And so it's kind of fun to see them. And of course we have a, a Facebook group and we do swapping and stuff. So I just, I, I love that. When you get the starter kit, you're also part of my team. So um, it's kind of a nice little perk. All right, good morning everyone. Um, it's nice to see you. I'm not gonna read off names today, but I'm gonna check to see if there's any questions along the way. Um, uh, Dee said, both bags are adorable and I love those small gift cards that fit inside too. Oh, I should mention, and I, I had an envelope kicking around here. Ah, it's over here. Okay, I'm coming back. Everything is not where it's supposed to be this morning. Stampin' Up! sells little 3x3 three three envelopes. So if you want to put your card inside an envelope, um, you can do that. The 3x3 three three card fits inside here, but at just a tiny bit of an angle because the width of the bag is 3x3 three three and this card is 3x3 three three or yeah. So anyway, just to keep that in mind, but because this is made of such light paper, it can actually bend just a little bit too. So if you're putting it in, you should have no problem getting your little purse in plus the little gift card. But I just wanted to mention, um, and the little um, envelopes are on my supply list as well. Um, use that supply list to choose what you want in your starter kit. Um, that will what will help you out as a starter point if you want to make these uh, projects. All right, Janine, uh, she just found this. She slept in this morning. Oh, yeah, you can watch the rest on the replay afterwards um, if you missed anything. Good morning, Sarah and Alice. Um, I said I wasn't going to say um, names this morning. Oh, okay, and Sarah and Dee are... Um, and Janine are all milk chocolate fans. Yeah, I I don't know. My mom, I don't know what's wrong with her. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, she likes dark chocolate. And um, uh, I don't know. I just I just don't, don't like it. I think one of the reasons is I'm very caffeine sensitive. And I can't have too much caffeine. And the dark chocolate ha definitely has more caffeine in it. And so it doesn't agree with me. And so maybe it's my body kind of saying, hey, whoa, don't have too much caffeine. So I don't know if that could be. Um, thank you, Janina. Like, I'm glad you like my little uh, creations. Um, Lori asked a question. How are you getting these new papers in advance of the new catalog? So as a demonstrator, because I bought the starter kit um, 15 years ago, and now I'm part of the Stampin' Up! family. So in December, um, everyone that's part of Stampin' Up! who bought the starter kit and is still active, we got an opportunity to order these papers in advance. So I took advantage of that and I bought all the paper packs in advance because I knew I would want them anyway and I knew I would want to show them to you. So we had that opportunity in advance and that's one of the cool things about getting the starter kit is we're going to have the opportunity to pre-order from the annual catalog in April. Customers can't order from the catalog until May. So with every catalog that comes out, the pre-order is approximately one month before the release to the general public. So we always have these advanced ordering perks. Uh, at the end of March, we're gonna get to see the PDF of the annual catalog too. Um, you know, about um, about five weeks ahead of, of everyone else. So the, it's just a little perk, um, you know, to, to be part of everything. Uh, you get some insider information and, um, you know, it's, it's 
So that's how I got the paper. That's a long answer to your question, but that's how I got the paper. I got it on the pre-order in December. You can no longer order it right now. So um, for, for demonstrators, for people who have bought the starter kit, um, you, can, um, you could only um, get it during that one month window. And now it's only available through the starter kit. Um, if you buy the starter kit, you're gonna get all of that paper included in your starter kit, plus $125 worth of product. And uh, they also include a past paper pumpkin. It's not, you don't get a choice in the paper pumpkin, but they include one. Um, so that's always a fun surprise too. You don't know which paper pumpkin you're gonna get in your, your kit. So that's a lot of product for only $99 um, and it ships for free. So a really awesome deal. Okay, um, Dee said, the new patterns will go well with the handsomely suited bundle. You're right, yes. Um, the handsomely suited bundle is in the Jan to June mini catalog, and it features kind of the, that shirt um, collar um, tie. So yes, these patterns, like look at this pattern, that would go so nicely um, to create like shirts out of, or like even a jacket out of yes I agree D. D you always have the best suggestions I love that all right well this is day four of the series and I hope you are enjoying the series I've got one more day left day five is coming up tomorrow and I'm going to be doing a YouTube live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, this was originally recorded on Facebook um, and I'm going to pop it over to YouTube. So if you liked what I'm doing, please like uh, my, my uh, page or subscribe to my channel if you're over on YouTube. Um, and that way you'll be able to get uh, notifications or um, I'll be in your feed um, if, you, if you like the projects that I'm doing. All right, if you have any questions about the starter kit, just let me know. Um, you can find me if you go over to qbsquest.com uh, forward slash join, you'll find more information about the starter kit. And if there's any question that you don't see on there, please ask it. I, I don't mind answering questions. I am a very curious person myself. I always have a lot of questions. So I really get people that have questions um, and um, I don't mind answering them at all. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow if you wanna join my live on YouTube for day five. Take care, bye-bye.